in which pair do the atoms contain the same number of neutrons? So I guess if I look at A, I have 11 boron and 12 carbon. If I look at the proton number, I can get that from the data booklet. So boron is proton number 5, carbon is proton number 6. So the number of neutron is 11 minus 5, which is 6, and 12 minus 6, which is 6. So really, I've got my same number of neutrons, just with option A. All right, okay, so you could have moved on. Uh, you could just double check that you got them correct. Boron is element 5, 11 minus 5 is 6, 12 minus 6 is 6. All right, you could have moved on. I'm just going to very quickly work out for the rest because uh, you, you will be expected to work through them uh, in a theory paper. Okay, so number of neutral is 7 minus 3 is 4, 9 minus 4 is 5. And then you have 24 magnesium, which is element number 12, and silicon, which is element number 14. 24 minus 12 is 12. 28 minus 14 is 14. 14 nitrogen, oxygen 16, so there's element 7 and element 6. 14 minus 7 is 7. 16 minus 6 is 10. Again, you can see clearly that A is the only correct answer. We could have moved on by just making sure that A was correct without having to work through the rest. I just simply work through the rest because, like I said, they could ask you in a theory paper. And my whole idea of this tutorial is not just to get to the answer, but it's also to show you that the other distractors are incorrect options, okay? Either by logic or by working them out. In this second question, you have two hydrocarbons. You have CWHX and CYHZ. So what they are trying to show it to you is, so this is the number of carbon, this is the number of hydrogen, this is the number of carbon, this is the number of hydrogen. So they are trying to show you the ratio of carbon is to hydrogen atoms are the same for both hydrocarbon okay so if the number of carbon is to hydrogen atoms are the same so there's the simplest ratio okay the simplest ratio must be the same therefore the empirical formula must be the same but the molecular formula are different because they are different whole number read carefully yeah so just they will simplify to the same number because they're equal but the actual numbers are different so they have different molecular formula because they have different molecular formula which is the actual number of atoms in one molecule so their relative molecular mass which is the mass for you know one whole molecule for one mole of that one whole molecule is going to be different so only the empirical formula is the same governed by this ratio of the atoms. Number three, you have a A bag. Your A bag contains sodium azide. The sodium azide can give you the nitrogen gas, but it also gives you the sodium, where the sodium gives you further nitrogen gas. All right? So there are two sources of your nitrogen gas, one from the first reaction and one from the second reaction where the sodium reacts further with potassium nitride to give you more N2. They bolted it for you. How many moles of nitrogen gas is produced in total? So this sodium goes to form this. But as you can see, this produced two sodium, but it's 10 sodium that reacts there. So we gotta work out. We gotta work out from the first reaction first. The mole of nitrogen is to the mole of NaN3. It's going to be equal to 3 over 2. That's from the balance equation. And now I'm going to put in the actual mole of nitrogen produced. This is the actual mole of nitrogen formed or produced. The mole of sodium azide, you have one mole of sodium azide that decompose. One mole of sodium azide that decompose in an airbag. So it's not two mole, it's actually one mole. So therefore, the mole of N2 formed in the first reaction is going to be 3 over 2 times 1, 1.5 mole. But that is not your final answer because, because that is from the first reaction. You also produce N2 from the second reaction. All right? From the second reaction, you can relate it in a mole ratio kind of way. So the sodium azide, 2 mole of it give you 2 mole of sodium. That's from the first reaction. Your second reaction shows you 10 mole of sodium give you 1 mole of nitrogen. All right? 
So here you have 2 and here you have 10. In order to join up the ratio and compare them well, you have to think about the lowest common multiple. This is called LCM and you have done this in primary school mathematics. I am sure of it. So here I am doing LCM of 2 and 10. It's just 10. So 10 to get to 10 is just 10 times 1. I don't do anything there. But then for that top bit, I need to multiply by 5. Because I multiply this by 5 and this is 2 is to 2, so I have to multiply both things by 5 as well. So in the end, what I get is I get 10 is to 10, which is the same as 1 is to 1, which is the same as 2 is to 2. So the ratio, it doesn't change. I've just changed the number. And because they are now 10 is to 10, well, I mean, that is 10, 10 for sodium. I can get the mole ratio like that because that is now 10. I can just combine them like that. And in doing so, I get the mole of NaN3 is to N2. So the mole of N2 from the second reaction is to the mole of NaN3 that you get from the first reaction is equal to 1 over 10. Okay. How much of the sodium is that do you actually decompose? You decompose one mole. So the mole of N2 actually form is 1 over 10, which is 0.1 mole. This is from the second reaction. Your first reaction produced 1.5 mole. Your second reaction produced 0.1 mole. So in total, 1.5 plus 0.1 give you 1.6 mole. Of nitrogen gas all right number four so you have ethane burns in oxygen to give you carbon dioxide and water so this is complete combustion they are asking you which bond angles are present in the molecules of ethane and its combustion product be careful yeah so you have ethane so despite the way I've drawn them that looks like 90 degree they are not 90 degree because each of these carbon has got four bond pair okay so four bond pair and zero lone pair because the carbon has used all the four outer shell electrons for bonding the four bond pair repel equally you get a carbon sp3 this is tetrahedral this is 109 degree okay in co2 you count the sigma bond so you have a double bond double bond but there's only one sigma and two sigma so there is two sigma, therefore, two bond pair on the carbon. Zero lone pair, because the carbon has used all four outer shell electrons for bonding. Two bond pair repel equally, you get linear. Carbon SP hybridization, that is 180 degree. Hybridization is required and stated as part of the learning uh, objective. Something you'll be expected to do in your AS structure and bonding. Okay, and they'll revisit this under organic chemistry as well. So an E10 is not 90 degree. Most people, well, some, some students who are much weaker, they try like this, they will think it's 90 degree without thinking about their hybridization, their valence shell electron pair repulsion theory, something they were expected to do, yeah? At least of an A-level students. Your combustion product is 180 degree. Uh, so we definitely have 180 degree. Oh yeah, and water vapor. Okay, I forgot about the water vapor. Okay, so there is two bond pair and two lone pair. So you get a band 104.5 degree. There's 104.5 degree. So there's for the water. This is for the CO2. Question five. Uh, they are saying that you have a sample of an ideal gas. If you have a sample of an ideal gas, then you follow PV equal to nRT. Then your PV over RT equal to N, where N is the number of mole of gas. What has changed? Have you added in more gas? No. You have increased the pressure. You have increased the pressure. So you change the pressure. But what happened to PV over RT, which is equal to N? which is constant because you're not adding in more gas, you're not removing gas. So for an ideal gas, if the mole of gas doesn't change, which is a constant, well, I will say it's a constant because the mole of gas does not change when you change pressure, all right? You don't take it out, you don't put anything in, it should just be a constant for an ideal gas. All right. 
number six, when you have an enthalpy change of an experiment, so we're talking about the mass of the solution. So this is the surrounding, the heat capacity of the solution, the temperature change for the solution, and then you want enthalpy change, all right? So you know Q of the surrounding, the heat transfer to the surrounding, which is the solution, is governed by mass times heat capacity of the water times delta T of the water. But you see an increase in temperature when delta T is positive because your reaction gives out heat. So your enthalpy change gives out heat, your enthalpy change is exhaust, that is when delta T is, is higher, is, is positive because your initial temperature increased. You get an endothermic reaction, meaning a positive enthalpy change, when your initial temperature is um, higher than your final temperature. Because when you have endothermic reaction, you take in the heat from the surrounding, so your initial temperature will drop. Okay, then your then your final temperature minus initial will be negative. So essentially, we have enthalpy change is equal to minus Q of the surrounding. Oops, sorry over the mole of the limiting reactant whereas this one is of the system there's a minus because it's the equal and opposite assuming conservation of energy whatever the system gives out it is translated in the temperature increase of the surrounding whatever the system takes in is interpreted in a temperature drop for the surrounding okay so it's important that you have a negative you must have a negative and we need to divide it by the limiting reactant if we want the enthalpy change in energy per mole. If we just want the enthalpy change in terms of energy, just joule or kilojoule, we would just be looking at minus mc delta t without dividing by mole, all right? So dividing by delta t is incorrect because mc delta t will give you the, the heat in terms of joule or kilojoule, we just didn't divide by mole here, so this would just be in kilojoule or joule. And the next step is to find out which one is limiting and of the reactant, and then divide by the mole, and you get kilojoule or joule per mole. Number seven. So you're given a series of enthalpy of formation. So I hope you know if you have elements forming each of these substance. So you have the formation of the reactants and the sum of the formation of the product such that you can get enthalpy of reaction is the sum of formation of product minus the sum of the formation of reactant based on this very simple head cycle I've just drawn you want to go this way you need to go that way and that way so it's minus the sum of the enthalpy of formation of reactant plus the sum of the enthalpy of formation of product, okay? So that's why we rarely draw this head cycle anymore, unless we have two in a theory paper, when they ask us to, we can just sub in everything. But important thing is, you are forming four more of the substance here, you are forming six more of the substance here, you are forming one more of the substance here. Formation is defined as forming one mole of the substance. So you need to multiply by the correct mole number and use bracket yeah because a lot of students are very uh, careless in fact myself included i can be careless sometimes as well so to cut down on all this carelessness use bracket because i mean are you gonna risk it all or you want to minimize your risk so use bracket all right so minus three zero one two plus six times two has six negative if you mess up the bracket there, you're gonna get a, I think you're gonna get minus, oh, the answer is actually I think minus 97 because there is a plus there. But I think there's this answer here for people who, who forgot the bracket or who did something wrong with the minus, they're gonna get 9,000 something. So very easy to make that mistake, yeah? Well, actually I got minus three at eight, not minus 97. Hmm, okay, never mind. So yeah, moving on. So which statement is always correct for an oxidation reaction? So oxidation does not involve, uh, it does involve gain of oxygen, but this is a very uh, crude, uh, very crude definition, okay? In the sense that um, 
usually, typically, when we talk about gaining oxygen or losing oxygen, gaining hydrogen or losing hydrogen, that mostly apply for organic chemistry, okay? But it doesn't exactly apply in the context of inorganic chemistry all the time. So let me just go through the other option while leaving this on the back burner, yeah? For one reactant to be oxidized, a different reactant must be reduced. Well, it says a different reactant must be reduced. But then we also have disproportionation. So you know disproportionation, classic case study, Cl2 plus NaOH. Whether you're under cold dilute NaOH or hot uh, concentrated NaOH, you're going to get different disproportionation product. But this species is both oxidized and reduced in the same reaction. The same reactant is oxidized and reduced in the same reaction. So that is not exactly correct. So I'm going through by contradiction now. The element of the ion being oxidized will gain electron that is incorrect. So if you remember your GCSE or all level, we have this mnemonic uh, idea. Oxidation is loss of electrons. If you undergo oxidation, you would lose electrons. Okay. The oxidation number of the element being oxidized will increase. I am more happy with D than A. Partly because, like I said, A is a very crude definition and some weaker students, especially if you are unaware of um, what are the other possibilities, especially regarding statements, you might just go with A because that's like one of the definitions you learn for oxidation, whereas there's a much better one. Definitely true for oxidation is your oxidation number of that species when you undergo oxidation will increase. That is the most correct one compared to A because when you have no oxygen, sometimes you can be oxidized as well, right? Because think about, uh, I don't know, a more reactive metal reacting with zinc 2 plus, you can get Mg2 plus plus zinc. Well, there's a change in oxidation number. This has undergone oxidation. The oxidation number go from zero to plus two, it has increased, but there's no oxygen involved, right? And you learn this from GCSE and all level. Magnesium is a more reactive metal than zinc is above zinc in the reactivity series. So this reaction will happen, okay? Number nine, NO2 is a brown gas, N2O4 is colorless. You get an equilibrium, so we can be thinking about um, Lee Chatelier principle, as you are expected to know. Which role describe the effect of changing conditions? So let's talk about changing pressure first. You have two moles of gas on the left, you have one mole of gas on the right. So you can catch more on how I explain all these equilibrium stuff under the uh, topical playlist of chemical equilibria. Something you'll be expected to master completely before you go on to more complicated uh, equilibrium concepts in, in the, your year 13 or in your upper sixth year or in your A2 year. Yeah? Um, Ideally, you have been able to explain it very well, considering that you have uh, done it a lot of time in theory. Two moles of gas on the left, one mole of gas on the right. You have more molecules of gas on the left and right. So when you increase the pressure, the equilibrium will try to decrease the pressure. It will try to shift to the side with lesser gaseous molecules in order to decrease the pressure. It will shift to the right because you have lesser number of gaseous molecules. You have one mole of gas versus two moles of gas on the left. When you shift to the right, due to increasing pressure, you will become more colorless and less brown. So your color will become lighter because you shift to the right, it become more colorless and less brown. In terms of temperature, we started off by talking about the forward reaction is exothermic. It releases heat energy. When you release heat energy, okay, your forward reaction release heat energy when you form N2O4, when you go from left to right, when you go forward direction. When you increase temperature, your system wants to decrease temperature. The only way your system can do that is by releasing less heat in order to decrease the temperature. When your system decreases less heat, it will favor backward reaction because if you favor forward, it will release more heat. So it will release less heat by favoring backward reaction it will favor the backward reaction, you will get more of the brown stuff, therefore, color will become darker. Okay, so C is the only correct answer there.